Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat podcast. My name is Amir. Miami Heat just defeated the Toronto Raptors 118 to 103, and it technically doesn't matter. I have Major joining me once again today. What's up, Major? How are you doing today? I would have been doing much better if the Heat got any help today. No help whatsoever. Like going into today, I it was really cool. I missed half of this game. I was playing basketball this morning and, and Major was doing things as well. And he he didn't watch most of the game either. But I loved how all the games were scheduled at the same time, all the East games, which is really cool. So every Eastern Conference team, I mean every team is playing today, but it was really cool that we had hope going into today that the Miami Heat had a small chance at five, had a little chance at, at six, and then the most likely chance was going to be, or the best scenario that was the most likely would have been seventh. But we all know that the Miami Heat won, which was great, but every team that needed to lose, only one team out of these four had to lose, and the Heat would have been seventh, but they all won. So the Miami Heat are eighth, and we're going to be playing against the Sixers on Wednesday. And fortunately for the Sixers, Joel Embiid didn't play today. I didn't know he was going to be out. He's going to have an extra day of rest because the Flyers are playing apparently on Tuesday. So they get an extra day. How are we feeling, Major? I season's done. I guess we got 10 games over 500 finally. Um, so we finally hit that mark. Yay. But the consolation is we're still eighth seed and we got to play Philly. How are you feeling, buddy? I mean, nothing's changed too much in how I'm feeling. I feel like they have played rather good as of late. Like some of their best basketball, yes, they've not played as good of teams, um, but they've been doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, I mean, today in the first quarter was close, tied, I believe, at 24 after the first quarter, and then they just dominated from then on out. Um, So that's exactly what they're supposed to do. They dominated Friday's game against Toronto and just have been playing um, rather well as of late. I like, you know, the mentality of Jimmy and other people, even though it might not show up as much in the stats because these last two games, it wasn't really close. So you don't need Jimmy to score 25. But Mm -hmm. early in the game when it was close, I felt like he was um, attacking rather well and passing well. Um, It is unfortunate. Out of all the scenarios we had coming into today, we get the worst case scenario um, and we're the eight going to Philly. But one important thing that I wanted to mention, and we were talking about this right here, um, that's going on right now and I'm looking at it, is now 120 to 117. The Knicks are beating um, the Chicago Bulls in overtime with 20 seconds left. Um, If the Bulls do come back and win that game, the Bucks will still be the two seed. So then if we win the 8-7 game, we would still play the Bucks in the first round. And even though I've said numerous times I'm not too scared of the Knicks in the playoffs, they have been playing incredible as of late, as well as Giannis is hurt, um, and he might not be available for, for the whole series. And we've seen how the Bucks have looked, even with Giannis, um, ever since they got Doc Rivers. I mean, I feel like maybe that we catch a break there and we get the 7 if we beat Philly and Philly, which is going to be absolutely tough. They're a juggernaut. Um, And they've maybe been playing the best basketball, the 76ers in the whole Eastern Conference with Embiid, right? They're just absolute dominant with Embiid. Um, So my outlook on the season hasn't changed. It's kind of, you know, I've accepted it to this point of we're going to have to wait and see to the playoffs type thing. Um, But, man, it would have been so much fun to – go through this whole season, everyone talking trash, and we somehow end up with the five or, you know, a couple last week we had a possibility of the three. That would have been awesome. Um, not that it really makes too big of a difference, but it just been like, just really stick it to everyone. And in Miami Heat fashion, we found a way to lose a couple games. So it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is at this point. And I don't know. I think I'd rather play the Knicks. Like you are looking too far ahead, my friend of, thinking the Heat are going to beat the Sixers. Anything's possible. We're better on the road this season compared to home, but like Philly's a hard place to play. Maxi yeah. has elevated his game exponentially this season. 
remember remember on five reasons or another pods they were talking about uh comparing maxi and a hero and i'm like mm, i think maxi's a little bit better you know yeah uh, yeah that that conversation unfortunately has ended and i think it's more so on maxi than hero i mean hero has played rather well when he's played maxi's yeah. been maxi's been cold so yeah he's been dominant so yeah he has been crushing it and beads back and like He's had a couple scares, it seems like, in the last few games where he's like kind of tweaked it. That knee came out, and in a few of those games, he came back. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't want him to be hurt because I don't want that excuse. But he's looked good. He's looked rather not like kind of like Tyler, Tyler Hero, like for someone who's missed a lot of time coming back and just like not being rusty whatsoever. Like his cardio probably is is not there. It's, it's never really been good in general, but he's a big man. But his ability on both like – ends of the floor have been great they're i think they're, they're on a 10 game winning streak now um tobias harris is coming back so someone who's a capable scorer like most ridiculous contracts in nba history without one all-star bid um don't want to go off on that tangent and then deandre melton like has been out for a while and like that guy's like a capable defender you know like three and d type player like they're deeper than i thought i looked at their roster and i'm like campaign you know has some finals experience mm -hmm. he was with phoenix not a bad backup still kind of young but he healed obviously sharpshooter three point shooter can get hot and nicholas batum very good vet like kind of older but still it's like they have like good pieces paul reed like had a lot they're of a minutes. Team. they're a solid team man so i don't know i'm kind of worried kyle lowry we got the kyle lowry rogier story like, what what would be more perfect for the year than Cal Lowry dropping like 40 on us in the playing game? Getting I mean, three charges, 40 points, just killing us. Shooting. Game winning charge. Yeah, right yeah. there. It's yeah, I already see it. Um on Terry, man, that would be if Terry plays. That's another thing. Um, but yeah, that there's so many storylines you can hit with this. So I guess from like a you know, content creation sp space. We got some storylines to talk about for this season um, and the play in. But I want to get your thoughts on one thing. Um, let's say they don't beat Philly because we just talked about how that's a really hard game. Who would you rather play, the Hawks or the Bulls? I would say that's a tough one, too. I would say probably the Hawks. I I don't know if Trey's playing. Is has Trey come back yet from that finger injury? He came back just a couple games ago. How's he look? He's still like iffy. Um, I think I think he's been decent. I don't. I haven't looked at his numbers specifically, to be honest with you. I think he's trash in general. And like I know we don't have Gabe like as our pit bull defender. Like and like we blitz. Got the lawn. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> And he looked good the last couple of games. Like I, all it takes is playing against the, the the Toronto Raptors in the final two games at home uh, to give confidence into a right a, a Jaime <laughs> Marquez, right? Jaime looked good again, um, which I love. But Trey, like we've always had the answer for him, um, mm -hmm. and I just don't like he's not he's obviously better than Jordan Poole, but like he's a Jordan Poole type guy, like with, who takes crazy like low IQ shots at times, like and. I don't He's know. The best area of Jordan Pools. Yeah. Right. And I mean, it's a scary because it's a one game sample size. Like DeJounte can go off in a one game. We saw what he did against the Celtics multiple times. And against the Heat. Month. Yeah. And against the Heat. Yeah. Against the Heat. Um, but what's his name? Jalen is a Johnson. It is hurt. Jalen Johnson's hurt. He's going to be out for a while. DeAndre Hunter steps up against us like at times. You know, he has games as well um, where he plays well against the Heat including yeah. the last game, the double overtime game. But I don't know. I think I'd rather play Atlanta. I don't think I want to deal with DeMar, who's clutch. Kobe White has had a really good season. Caruso, like that dude is a pest and like one of the best defenders in the NBA. Like that guy's annoying. That guy can get you in trouble in a one-game sample size. So I'm going to say Hawks. What about you? So I'm going to say the Bulls. Um and update on the game, DeMar DeRozan just missed the game winner. So the okay. Knicks are officially the two seed. Um, so Knicks are. Knicks are now the two seed. Yep. Got and it. we'll be the two seed. So I would rather play the Bulls because I'm not I'm not scared of either team. I'll preface that. We Same. should be either one by 15, 20. Um, but 
one game sample size. We've talked about it before, and you just mentioned it. I am not a Trey Young fan either. Um, I, I like I said, Steph Curry or Jordan Pools, like some of the dumbest shots. He kills the rhythm sometimes. A lot of turnovers. Small, not great at defense. He has improved on that end a little bit, but I don't trust him. So I'm fine playing him. But at the same time, just like Jordan Poole, just like a lot of these other guys, one game. <laughs> yeah. Because he can drop 10 threes on you in one game. Um, and that that's a little bit scarier. DeMar, he does it more methodically. And, yes, I, I mean, Caruso is great. Um, and Kobe White, you know, wearing my North Carolina shirt. Shout out right. Kobe White, the Tar Heel. Um, he's been killing it as well. But I think – they will have a harder chance of just erupting and killing the heat, if that makes sense. Um, Because you're playing with fire with Trey Young and DeJounte. um, And DeAndre Hunter, um, Alex from Five Reasons, always says he sees Tyler Hero and he just becomes a scorer. Um, It's Mm -hmm. crazy. Um, So that's a little iffy for me. Um, I'd much rather play the Bulls. But... You know, we're going to beat Philly anyway, so we don't really need to talk about too much about that, right? I mean, I I hope so. This I, <laughs> this is this is this is the Philly game all over again last week, the Pacers game all over again, the Mavs game, like these must wins, but there is a little more weight to it now. Like you're not eliminated as you lose in the 7-8th game, but if you lose that seven eighth game, so this is why we're saying this is the worst potential outcome of the day and the heat are capable of losing because the Sixers have been good and on the road, you play the Boston Celtics in the first round and and that's not fun. Like you have no momentum, you know, like you, the heat, I wouldn't say they have too much momentum, like playing against the Raptors, like you should win those games, but at least we ended on the high. Yeah. We ended on a high, but like losing to the Sixers and then having to go play Boston, like Heat and Boston Twitter is going to be an egregious like cesspool of just horrible, vile commentary, which I like. I would love to see, especially if the Heat win. But like that's like going to be tough. Like this is a must win, and they need to Jimmy and Bam and Tyler and everybody else needs to play as in. Like this is an elimination game, basically, right? To mm-hmm. avoid playing Boston in the first round, because then you get to play the Knicks, which I think, outside of the Giannis piece, like even if Giannis comes back, which I think he will, me, I think he'll have time to come back. You'll get another week off of rest, right? So I'd still rather play the Bucks, no, excuse me, the Knicks, than the Bucks. So you got to win this game so you can play the Knicks, because otherwise you lose. I have faith. Again, you mentioned this. We could be we could beat the best of any teams and we could lose to the worst of any teams. You've said that before in a, a podcast. So, but in all likelihood, I still think we're going to beat Boston or excuse me, Bulls or Hawks. I think we'll beat them, but you want to avoid playing the Celtics. This is a must win for the Miami Heat. Like, don't you agree? Like they have to try to win this game. Jimmy needs to be playoff Jimmy on Wednesday. I would agree. Um a cool note, if the Bucks were the two seed too and we got the two seed, it would have been the same exact path as last year. So that would have been like a cool little thing as well um, as I dropped my mic. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the issue is it's a must win. And I talked about this, you know, on several, you know, different things and tweeted it. It's not truly a must win in the regular season. And it's kind of the same in the seven, eight play in <laughs> like, to a certain degree, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's like you still have another chance. And the Heat, we saw it last year. It wasn't a true must win, and they came out terrible in the 7-8 game. And then it was a must win. They showed up whenever it was like, oh, crap, we might actually lose this. Against Chicago, um, they were down a lot with four minutes left and came back and won that game. And then ever since then, it was elevated. So – I would consider it kind of, you know, in the way you put it, a must win of it's going to greatly increase their chances of making a big run if they win. Um, But as far as being like, oh, Jimmy and Bam, they're best when their backs are truly, truly against the wall. 
Um, Cause you always have that psychological thing of I'm not truly in do or die right now. Um, you can simulate it as much as you want to, but you're not always going to be there for the playoffs. Like you get Boston round one that has potential to be amazing, but yep. more than likely I'll set my Homer side, of, you know, aside um, and my bias, more than likely the Heat would lose that series on paper, right? Mm-hmm. But let's say they have about a 3% chance, right? Um, but Just like Boston last time, just like ESPN said, we did against Boston. In the, the yeah, exactly. Game. Exactly. It's obviously higher than three, but I was, you know, just making a little dig there. But uh, I, I mean, I think it's going to be an interesting scenario. There's a lot of storylines. Um, ideally, you would have been five or six coming into today, not blowing a couple big leads against some bad teams um, to play with fire over here, but it's the Miami heat way, you know, scare their fans a little bit. Completely. And going back to the whole must win piece though, it's like last year when they were the seventh seed, the bucks were the number one seed. And I don't remember the two seed was it Boston last year or Boston number two. So no, cause we were the eighth yeah, no, we were the. Yeah, I think it was we played, Boston. We played, too. Yeah, we played the Bucks one, so I think Boston was two. Uh, maybe they wanted to avoid Boston last year, but I I don't think they cared as much because Milwaukee. I'm looking it up right now. Last year, offensive rating when they were the number one seed, twelfth. Defensive rating, fourth. So like offense wasn't great, and Boston this year. I'm giving the reason why Miami needs to step the F up because Boston's the best team in basketball on paper by record. They are number one in offense and number three in defense. Um, or is it number two? Let me double check. Yep. One in offense, offensive rating, defensive rating number three. Like this is a juggernaut. Like you want to play hard to avoid that versus last year in the Bucks are like, eh, Bucks are, Bucks are great, but they're not as good as like the Celtics are like record. Yeah. They have a downside. Yeah. And and they're so much more top heavy as well. This this Boston team as well, which is good and bad. But I mean, <clears throat> I just think the Heat don't want to play Boston in the first round. I think they have to to try um really hard because they do want to avoid the second playing game because any given Sunday, it's a one game sample size. And in theory, this team can go from doing what they did last year uh to just losing, you know, the in the play and losing both playing games. Like I wouldn't don't put it past that. them. I don't. It's not going to happen. I'm just saying, like, I don't believe that either. But would you put it past them, like, <laughs> in the realm of possibility? Like, that's totally possible. Like, that's possible with this frustrating season that we have to deal with. Like, this inconsistent team, no. especially on the offense. It's the offense. Defense. Yeah. We've been killing it. We're like the fourth defensive rated team. Like, we've climbed the ladder. We've been playing way better. It's just the offense has not been good enough in those certain games that we mm-hmm. lost. You mentioned with leads and just against crappy teams because we could have easily been a fourth or fifth or sixth seed by winning a few of those games. And the offense has handicapped this team throughout the season, like honestly. So that's the scary part. It's the, I I believe in the defense. It's the, the offense can be anemic and, and put up those donuts and duds and a Hawks team or a Bulls team can get hot. That's the scary part. That's the exact thing. You know, we're the complete opposite of the Hawks, right? Like our defense is going to be there, but we could just, you know, we said the Hawks have that one game where they can just hit everything, Trey Young specifically. We can have that one game where we score 79 points and there's five minutes left in the game. It's like, what is happening? Um, you, you're like, you're getting sh- good shots, but you can't make them. That is the Miami Heat. In that one game, it's scary. I mean, I got cooked for this in a group chat, but I said, I trust them more in a series against Boston than in any of the play-in games. Um, 100%. I, agree. I, I trust the Heat to figure it out over seven games. I'm not saying they're going to win like this series or anything like that, but like one game scares me. This team, and you, like you said, you, I mentioned it all the time, they can lose to absolutely anyone, um, and they can beat absolutely anyone. And that one game coin flip, which is what it feels like, um, is something I would have liked to avoid, <laughs> but we're in there now. So, you know, maybe – Maybe playoff Embiid shows up a little bit early and we get play in Embiid. Um, well, and we, and we shut him down. Playoff Embiid is not that great because he's exactly how many, yeah, how many Eastern Conference fi- uh, finals has he made? Zero. So, you yeah. know, 
based on injury, based on just having James Harden esque type of games, like he'll have better games than James Harden. I'm sorry. I'd rather have obviously Embiid over Harden in the playoffs. Like one chokes more than the other, but Embiid chokes too and has games where he's like averaging like 15 points a game, like 18 points a game, like from an MVP who's averaging 30 in the past two seasons. Like that is historically yep. bad. Like for, and that's, that's amazing if you can get Embiid to do that even in one single game in a series out of seven, right? Mm -hmm. Actually seven games. So uh, it should be interesting. The Heat were two and two against them. We'll, we'll end here in a, in a sec. Um, but looking back, so the Heat were two and two against the Sixers, and we lost, I believe, the last two. So the first two games, no Jimmy, no Embiid. Heat won those two games. If you remember one of them, Christmas, Jaime Hawkes had like 31 points and dominated the Sixers. Yep. So the third game, no Jimmy, no Embiid, which I didn't realize all this stuff. I look back, but like I didn't realize Jimmy didn't play the first three um against the Sixers so the first three Jimmy and Embiid didn't play third game the Sixers won last game was last week and we know both of them obviously played and if we won that game we would have been the sixth seed right probably our seventh seed whatever it would have been yeah um, but we lost that game we lost that game so we're going into it two and two let's end with your prediction let's get it on record on tape give me your prediction and a score for Wednesday night, Heat versus Philly. I'll give you mine afterwards. All right, Heat versus Philly. Obviously, the Heat are going to win. Um, I'm going to go 107 to 102. And I think it's going to be a little bit low scoring. Um, and for the Heat, that's an average game. But for a lot of NBA teams, that's low scoring. Um, I think it's going to be in the mud a little bit. I don't think Embiid will get as favorable of a whistle he typically gets in the regular season. Um, and Max, he's killed us the past two games, absolutely dominated us um, and killed us with his passing. Um, he's been getting wide open shots in the first quarter. He has started off slow, um, especially on a defensive end against him. I expect that to be ramped up in this game because like we talked about, even though it's not truly a must win, um, you got to have as close to a mentality of that as you can. You got to come out you know, on your best foot. Um, and they have the moral high of beating, yes, as Toronto Raptors, but they just won two games by like 20 points. Um, that means a little bit of something in your mind. You're like, oh, yeah, we're doing good right now. Um, so I'm going to go with we're going to win it um, because I have guts and I can't pick against the Heat. I just hope Jimmy doesn't come in and like, it's okay. It doesn't matter for the eighth seed seven c you're playing the boss and the celtics the sixers like in the first round like he can just be like who cares so it is what it is we're the okay. eighth seed. we're playing I tweeted like yesterday one seed five seed eight seed it doesn't matter y'all you need a 16 w's yeah. it's gonna be hard <laughs> to get it's gonna be hard to get the first four if the heat lose against yeah. the Sixers and have to play boston but jimmy's gonna be like who gives a shit boston boston is whatever like that's the yeah same. That's the first team in our way on our path on our journey. I can see that. That's what he, what he's gonna say is we'd have to play in the Eastern Conference Finals anyways. Might as well get it over with. Might as well rip the band aid, do it now, break up with the girl now, right? Because you got to do it eventually. <laughs> exactly. So I'm gonna, I'll give my prediction too because I'm crazy. Let's say these last two games really built momentum for us, especially with the with the role players, the Jaime's and the Delon Wrights and. Uh, even Tyler Hero has been looking great. So I'm going to be delusional and crazy too. Let's go. I'm going to say we're going to beat Kyle Lowry's ass. We're going to get Jimmy on Kyle, that little meatball. And like for some reason you saw that game, he didn't attack Kyle when he had him defending him at like at least six or seven possessions. I don't know if he even scored once on him, which is sad. But I think Jimmy is going to hunt certain players and Jimmy's going to be aggressive. He looked aggressive today, like even with this mm -hmm. like – he must win, and then other things have to happen. Other variables have to happen. But like, let's control. What we can control today. He shot nine shots. He shot. He shot nine shots and played twenty minutes today. Like he shot only seven shots and played a little bit more, like thirty something minutes in the first Toronto game on Friday. So he was engaged. I think he's gonna be really aggressive in this game, and I think the Heat are gonna win. 
a hundred. I, I'm like, do I say even 110 and above with this team? It's like so hard for them to get that many points. Um, cause they only got 118 against Toronto and they had literally their entire team out. Um, I'll say like 109, 109 to like 106. Like let's, it's going to be a nail biter close game, but I'm going to give it to the Miami heat. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I think we could ride this last thing on last question real quick before we leave. Do you think Terry's going to play? Cause I don't, I know Duncan's not going to play. They're not going to, there's, I don't, I don't think he's going to play. There's no time frame. Do you think Terry's going to play and Kevin Love who also got hurt, which is big. Cause we have our backup best big who's been crushing it. I'm yeah. going to guess none of them play. I don't know for sure. Um, I don't know anything, but it sounds like the Kevin Love thing, they might have got lucky. Uh, might have not, but it didn't look good. Um, Duncan's definitely not playing, I would say. Yep. And Terry, it doesn't sound too great about his neck. I mean, it's like day by day, but it doesn't look like it's improving based off, I feel like, what people have been tweeting and what I've heard. But I could be very wrong, and they could all three play. You know, who knows? Um, but I'm going to go with uh, none of them. Um, I, I I think they should have enough if Jimmy shows up and Bam shows up. I don't think it should matter in the play-in. We would desperately need um, all three of them, especially Love and Rozier, in the first round. I agree. Yeah, I didn't know any, any updates on Terry with his neck, but... I know that Duncan's not going to play. I'm pretty sure Kevin, they're going to sit him out, assuming mm-hmm. that we need to rest and they're going to win that playing game so that they can sit him out for the first round. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Terry not playing. You know, I would hope that he would be able to go, but this team is weird. And sometimes we play better when there's injuries, right? Like when people have more defined roles, like Tyler's like, oh, Terry's not coming back. I'm the man. I'm starting. Duncan's out. Mm-hmm. We play better when there's defined roles. We always play with like the next man mentality bs whatever so that might play in our favor but hey the theme has continued you know kevin love gets hurt in the last game you know terry's hurt like duncan's hurt like we're never healthy but whatever we have enough so we have enough no excuses our favorite slogan we have enough run it back let's go thank (laughs) you so much for joining me major today um if you want to again as always let the audience know how they can find you yeah, so just find me at Twitter at major underscore passing. So just put an underscore in between my name um, and I'll pop right up. And then just follow the Five Reasons Sports Network. You'll see a lot of my stuff being posted there as well. Awesome. Thanks, Major. Thank you. Have a good one.